Las Vegas, Nevada, started and ran by dreamers, legitimate businessmen, and tightly controlled by gangsters, profiteers, and investors, all looking to control the luck of every visitor. And they were all white men. Yet, there was one exception. The first black American to achieve a gaming license in Nevada and the world. And she was a woman. Sarah Ann Knight Preddy became the gaming queen. I'm Sarah Ann Knight Preddy, and I'm about to tell you the story of my life. I'm considered uh, the first woman of color in the world to hold an unrestricted gaming license. So that's my claim to fame. Well, I was born in New Fall, Oklahoma in 1920, and I guess I got my um, entrepreneurship from my father. Left Oklahoma in 1942 and came to Las Vegas, and that's when my real life started. Leaving her four children to be raised by her mother and father, she went to find her dreams. Sarah Ann quickly adapted to the nightlife of the segregated west side of Las Vegas. Dealing 21 and running the Kino games, she was gaining her independence quickly and making friends the whole way. Sarah Ann's husband found a better paying job at a military ammunition depot in Hawthorne, Nevada, just 300 miles from Las Vegas. Little did she know, this move would change her life forever. So when I went there, it was a Lincoln bar. After starting work, her new boss told her that he wanted to sell the Lincoln Bar and offered her to buy it for $600. Talking her parents into loaning her the money, she became the new owner and changed the name. And of course that was an unusual name to be in a little hick town like Hawthorne was, so I named it the Club Tonga. It was just a bar. They had liquor license but nothing else but the bar. Back in the day, it was easy to get a license. It was almost like getting a license for a shoe stand. And that was the start of my life in being in gaming, a gaming business. Sarah Ann became the first black and woman to own a gaming license in Nevada. For seven years, she operated the Club Tonga. So that's the story of being a Hawthorne for seven years. The Moulin Rouge was the first integrated resort casino in Las Vegas. Finally, a place where everyone, black and white, could intermingle with each other. Even after performing at other casinos, Hollywood's elite would come by later to the Moulin Rouge for the party. She immediately saw where the future was going. She left Hawthorne and moved quickly back to Las Vegas, and soon after, started other types of businesses. Then I had a couple more businesses. I had a cleaner, I had a dress shop, and I was trying to find my way in the world to what I wanted to be doing from now on. I had a chance to open up uh, People's Choice. And that was my first start in really big time business was People's Choice. And I was at People's Choice for about 17 years. At the age of 65, there came a chance of a lifetime. Her dream came true. She became the owner of the Moulin Rouge. I miss so and so because I got this license. I got all these Cadillacs and diamonds and furs and I'm big time and I'm bigger than the movie stars. Success. The big time. Then came the undercurrent of her success, unforeseen tragedy, scandal, fires, multiple murders, I'm, I used to be a millionaire, but I'm on welfare now. kidnapping. Through life's tragedy and success, Sarah Ann remains resilient. And I think I'm still strong and I'm still enduring and intend to go through anything else that happened in life. This young girl from Eufaula, Oklahoma, reached for life and its potential. As a grown woman, she was constantly challenged by sexism, business, and racism, and only to rise to the top and tell you this. And I feel if I accomplished all of this, I'd give another person a feeling that if she did it, I can do it too. At the age of 90, Sarah Ann was awarded the honorary doctorate from the University of Nevada, Las Vegas.